Welcome to this week's edition of the Commissioner's Corner. Today we've got a Husky with us, senior goaltender from Mound, Minnesota, Emma Paluzny. Emma, we're so excited to have you, excited to uh, get to know you a little bit better and find out how things are going with the Huskies. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me on. You got it. So let's, um, kind of the same question I've asked everybody, unfortunately, is talking a little bit about, you know, how we're doing right now, basically, right? So we, we you come back to school, you're not even necessarily in classes, they're virtual, we don't have a schedule, there's a lot of questions about what the season's going to look like, and then we get a schedule and we're ready to go. And then <laughs> there's an outbreak at St. Cloud and we have a pause and it's slowed down even more. So the emotions... I imagine for your team, you know, the roller coaster to start had to have been interesting. So I'm just curious if you can share with us kind of, you know, your thoughts, how you all got through it um, and, and how you mm -hmm. felt like you were able to get ready. Yeah, for sure. It was, it was definitely um, a bit difficult at the beginning of the season, especially when we first got on campus. Um, you know, we had a really young group, though, and they did a good job of kind of adapting to the circumstances. Um, obviously, we didn't really know when we were going to be playing. And then once we did kind of get that schedule set in place, uh, we had a couple of COVID cases and, and had to go on a pause and and uh, kind of take a step back for a little bit, make sure we were all getting healthy. Um Obviously, it's pretty hard not to go to the rink every day, you know, when you're supposed to be peak season. But um, I, I think we did a good job of kind of just sticking within our, our little pods within our team um, with roommates and, and uh, stuff like that. And luckily, we had a pretty warm October. So um, we, we were able to still get outside and do workouts um, and stuff like that through October and even into November a little bit and uh, try and stay in shape uh, like that. But definitely good to be healthy now as a group and, uh, you know, be able to play play games each weekend here. So you mentioned it already, young squad. I mean, relatively speaking, your, your group is young. So it's interesting. I had a freshman on last week uh, mm -hmm. and her perspective about just maybe not what she was expecting. And of course, you know, it's very different for someone like you, who's a senior, who's been around and maybe anticipates what should be happening and what wasn't happening. And then for your freshmen. So how, tell me, you know, leadership wise for you, your fellow seniors, what was, what were some of the keys to keeping your freshmen and underclassmen you know, prepared and ready. Yeah, for sure. I, I, we've had a lot of conversations kind of within our, our senior group, just trying to keep people grounded, um, you know, right now with a lot of stuff going on in people's personal lives too, and how COVID can affect that. Um, I think now more than ever, it's important just to, to be there for your teammates, but also remind them, you know, when you get to the rink each day, uh, kind of leave that stuff at the door, go play hockey, have fun with your teammates each day. Um, and then, you know, you, you can rely on each other away from the rink for whatever else pops up there. But, you know, it's definitely been something for kind of our senior leadership group that uh, we want to take things one day at a time, not get too far ahead of ourselves because with COVID <laughs> things can change pretty quick um, just on a case by case basis, obviously. And uh, I think that our younger, younger group, we've got a lot of freshmen and sophomore that have made really great contributions to the team already. I think they've done a really good job of kind of stepping up and, um, and taking, taking notes uh, on, on how to just live kind of day by day in, in the COVID environment. Do you feel like there's a different sense of uh, gratitude for the game or gratitude for the opportunity this year that, you know, maybe hadn't existed in the same ways in the past? Yeah, for sure. I think that that's kind of something that we've all um, kind of realized just how lucky we are to be able to, to play hockey each and every single day. Um, I think it was our game against Duluth. It was our first game against Duluth. And I think we were the only hockey game going on in the entire state of Minnesota. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't think there was any other WCHA teams playing because of pauses. There was no men's games going on um, because, you know, Big Ten wasn't really going yet. WCHA wasn't going yet. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. We're in, I think that was November or maybe it was December, November, December, no matter what, you know, there's usually probably hundreds of games going on across the state. Um, and that day, I think we were the only one. And, and that really just puts things into perspective, just in terms of how lucky we are to get to, to play hockey each and every single day, you know, go to the rink practice and uh, get to play games too. It's, it's definitely something that we've all had to realize a little bit more here with COVID. Certainly all of us in lots of different ways. You're right. It's been a, mm -hmm. you know, a learning experience, I think all the way through and just grateful for, you know, the opportunities that we're seeing it as we go. So this squad uh, already with as many WCHA wins right now, as you had all of last year, uh, what do you think mm -hmm. the key is behind that success? Or what do you feel like maybe is, uh, is changing or happening within the program that's, that's lending to that? 
Yeah, I think the program, it's definitely going in a really good direction right now. We made some changes over the summer with um, our strength and conditioning team too. Um, and we were kind of able to take advantage of the delayed start to, to work with that new staff and um, really kind of develop off the ice, um, you know, just because we weren't really skating quite as much with all the COVID protocols, but we were still able to get in the weight room and, and work out. So I think that that's really been a major help uh, just in terms of uh, raising all of our fitness levels, um, working with them off the ice and, and getting strong and faster but I, I think also you know we've kind of uh, come to, to find what makes us most successful on the ice just making simple plays um, you know make, putting the puck deep uh, for checking hard I think that's really when we're playing our best hockey and, and when we're able to do that I think you know we've been able to show spurts throughout this season already that we can really play with any team um, you know no matter where they stand in the WCHA and it's just kind of dedicating to to that commitment of um, being very uh, consistent in the way we play. So personally for you last mm -hmm. year, you led the nation in saves over 1100 saves. How did that push you in the off season? How did that push you to, to come back and be ready to go? Yeah, last year it, it was tough at points. That's for sure. Um, you know, Janine and myself had been splitting time uh, since my freshman year, um, you know, and it was her senior season and, and due to kind of injury and health issues, she wasn't able to play uh, for most of the year. So kind of put a little bit more of uh, the brunt of the work on me, which I wasn't really prepared for I, uh, going into the year. I knew that, you know, there was a good chance that I'd probably be um, a little bit busier than I was the last two, but it was definitely something where, you know, after I was able to kind of put that season away and, you know, reflect on it a little bit, it definitely uh, kind of put me in, in a different mindset going into this year as well, just trying to not only focus on, on just, you know, uh, the physical side of things, because, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I take pride and fitness and, and all that stuff, obviously, but um, focusing a little bit more on the mental side of the game too. I think last year, just, just very mentally draining for myself. And, and I think I was able to kind of grow uh, over the off season, just in terms of knowing myself a little bit better and what I need um, off the ice in order to, to kind of uh, be prepared for a full season with uh, lots and lots of saves. <laughs> you, you speak like a veteran, which is so refreshing. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's interesting, right? And anytime we have, I have conversations with student athletes, it's, it's the perspective that you bring to what it is that you're talking about. And your perspective is one of, of um, experience, which I think is so great. And, and obviously it's so nice to hear you say that, you know, you, you took something from it differently than just the physical component, because I think the mental component oftentimes gets lost. And I hope those who are listening realize how important that piece of it is to, to your success. Um, Mound, Minnesota. So not, you know, you're a Minnesota kid growing up. Why St. Cloud? Yeah, I, um, I grew up in Mount, smaller, smaller school, single A school. Um, you know, I watched the Gophers growing up um, and uh, watched a lot of WCHA hockey. I think I even had a birthday party uh, watching the Gophers and the Mavericks play one year uh, when I was a, was a, a little kid, but I uh, definitely wanted to stay, you know, in the state of Minnesota, you know, play for the WCHA. It's the best league in the country by far, uh, most competitive. And, you know, in my visit to St. Cloud, it, it, just the community that they have here in terms of the team and um, the, the connections that you make with your teammates and, and uh, with your coaches, I think that really just stood out to me. And, you know, through my three and a half years here now, I, I think that you know, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else just in terms of the people I've been able to meet, uh, the friendships that I've made with my teammates and, and just how close we all are as a group. Um, you know, I, I think I've, I've relied on a lot of people on this team to, to kind of help me grow and, and grow my perspective, not just of hockey, but also of, you know, life away from the rink. And, and uh, yeah, I really couldn't imagine going anywhere else. <laughs> so when you talk to recruits or when you're telling someone, you know, why they should come to St. Cloud. What do you tell them? What is, what's, what's special about being a Husky? Yeah. I mean, I would definitely say just those connections. I think that uh, we've got such just a genuine good group of girls, um, you know, and I, I know everybody always says that they've got the best, best team and the best teammates. Um, and, and everybody says that, but I think that, you know, with our group, um, we're just, a, I think we've got a really strong, strong bond. Um, just in terms of, of being able to face adversity together as a group. Uh, you know, I, over the course of my three and a half years here, there's definitely been some struggles, um, but it's never really affected how close we are as a group. And if anything, it's, it's kind of brought us together. Um, so I, I would definitely say, you know, 
to all recruits kind of looking to see what school that they're they're looking for they've, they've really got to look for those personal connections that they can make and if they can see themselves there um and that's really the most important thing because at the end of the day you know you hope to be playing hockey every day but you know there's definitely circumstances that that can change uh where you know you, you don't get to play every day uh and you want to make sure that you love that team that you're on uh and that you've you found friendships with people uh that are that are going to last beyond the just uh, your time on the ice the admissions department is, is listening they need to hire you that would be great so <laughs> i think what's so important and i what i hear regularly from our student athletes in our league is it's the combination of you know obviously high quality competitive awesome collegiate hockey mm -hmm. along with the personal connections that you're speaking of and um, mm -hmm. I appreciate that comment so much about, you know, having to be in a place where you can be if you don't have hockey, because if nothing else, this year has taught all of us that things can change in a minute and they do change in a minute sometimes. And yep. if you're in a space where, you know, you can't enjoy that space without maybe the, the, the biggest piece of it when you're making that decision, then it's much more difficult. So um, mm -hmm. sounds like your leadership is really making a difference there. So that's kudos to you. <laughs> Uh, you. Bemidji this weekend uh, uh -huh. at home. So what do you think? Uh, this will be the, have you, this will be the second time you've played them, right? Yep. So yep. keys to the game, differences, do you think? Um, what are you expecting from the Beavers this weekend? Yeah, definitely uh, excited to go this weekend, uh, playing Bemidji at home. Uh, we played them at Bemidji last, uh, um, during the first half. So definitely a little bit of a different game being on our own sheet of ice. It's a little bit bigger, uh, able to spread the game out a little bit more, but I think in general, um, you know, we found success in, in our first series against Bemidji when we were getting pucks in deep and, uh, having a good four check. And I think we had a really good energy, even <laughs> though we were traveling kind of the day of the game, um, with uh, different COVID protocols. So I think we're going to be a little bit more well rested going into the week weekend for sure not having to travel which is it's pretty nice um and and uh kind of having our own facilities and whatnot to to rely on as well but definitely just getting pucks in deep for checking and and um playing a fast game i think is really going to be a, a major key for us and and uh being able to to kind of roll around them in their own zone is definitely uh, fun and something that we saw in that first series for quite a bit of the game what's next for emma after St. Cloud State University. What, what's your, first of all, I guess you should tell us, yeah. what are you majoring in and what are you, you know, what's next? What are you hoping to do? Yeah, so I actually, um, I graduated in December, 2020. I was a COVID graduate um, for my first major, which was mass communications. Uh, and I'm still pursuing my second degree, which is political science. Uh, I've just got a senior thesis left this semester for that. Uh, but I also started my MBA here at St. Cloud as well. Um, so I'm pretty busy in, in that regards. Um, I, I've never taken a business class before, so the MBA should be kind of interesting. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But um, I, I'm definitely kind of excited to get going on that, kind of round myself out a little bit more. You know, mass common political science were, were really fun, but definitely think MBA is going to be better down the line uh, professionally for whatever I want to do, which I, I joke with my roommates. I don't think I want to start my real life until I'm like 30 or something like that. <laughs> um, so I, I'm planning on having fun kind of for a while here, just keep playing hockey as much as I can. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, here at St. Cloud or uh, overseas playing professional or, or professional here in North America, just kind of wherever I end up, uh, but definitely see myself playing hockey for, you know, at least a, a couple more years and, um, you know, trying to, <laughs> to carry on that as, as much as I can. And, you know, eventually I'll, have to kind of grow up a little bit I guess they say and get a real <laughs> job we always joke too is we were like what's the age where you get kicked off your parents health care like you know is it 26 I think so maybe I have to start at 26 but I'll figure it out I can stay healthy for a couple of years without health insurance right <laughs> those are good oh, plans gosh. though I like it I, and yeah for, for somebody who has been adulting for a long time it's okay to wait like enjoy it while you can because exactly once it, once it comes it doesn't stop so uh, uh -huh. I, I love that I love that. Okay, so we're towards the end now. And we're to this section that I call This Is Me, where I'm just going to ask you a whole bunch of random questions about Emma. And you're going to help us understand a little bit more about Emma. So first thing that comes to your mind, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, favorite food? Oh, anything that is homemade, like that I cook usually too. I like cooking. Nice. Nobody has said that yet. No. So I have to tell you. Okay, we'll get to it later. Yeah. I gotta remember something. Favorite, okay. favorite movie. Um, anything by Quentin Tarantino. Favorite holiday. 
Uh, I'll go Christmas. Everyone has said Christmas. I think, tell me why, tell me why. Well, you know, you always get to go home Thanksgiving. It's like, sometimes you've got to spend it here at school. So it's, it's still fun to do that, but definitely Christmas time is a um, good time to go back, see, see family for the first time in a long while and, and uh, get to spend some time at home. So I don't know. Christmas is kind of my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say, cause you get a little break from hockey. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's nice too, but I, I'm usually, I'm usually biting at the bit to get back to school by the end of break. I love my family, but I don't live with them for long terms that like long periods of time, yeah. that long. So it's good to see them, but eventually get back to hockey is definitely nice. <laughs> uh, biggest fear. Oh, um, biggest fear. I would say not being successful. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. sure you'll have, a, I'm sure you'll do okay, but that's, yeah. that, that will drive you. How's that? It serves as yeah. motivation. How about dream exactly. vacation? Oh, dream vacation. Um, I've done it already, but I would love to go back at British Virgin Islands. Um, it's my favorite place in the whole wide world and you can charter sailboats and, and stuff like that in catamarans. I love boating. So Minnesota kid, you know, I, I grew up on the lake. So going on the ocean is pretty fun too. <laughs> Guilty pleasure TV show. Oh, um, there's been a couple of recent ones, especially with quarantine. Uh, I really liked, are you the one from MTV? That one was pretty funny. It's kind of like a little mix of like the bachelor bachelorette vibe only it's like, there's not really any restraints on what they can say. So it's pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) I have to check that out. Uh, Game day pump up jam. Oh, um, I'll go closer by chain smokers. That's a pretty good one. Um, yeah, I know me and a couple of my teammates that graduated last year. We'd love that one. So that's, it's a good song. Got it. I love that one too. Favorite mm-hmm. WCHA opponent and why? Sorry. Can you repeat that? My Siri came on. I couldn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite WCHA opponent and why? Okay. Um, I'll go with Duluth. I love going up there. It's usually a nice little break. Uh, usually getting to stay by the water too, which is pretty cool. Um, but they play fast game and I love playing up on their sheet too. playing on the small, small sheet ice is always kind of fun to transition to, um, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, Duluth, I, I'll go with Duluth. I don't know exactly why, but they're a fun team to play. <laughs> Best mm-hmm. hockey memory. Mm, hockey day, Minnesota, for sure. Um, it was my freshman year. We were playing against Duluth actually, and uh, we won in a shootout. Our captain at the time, Britt Anderson, scored like the shootout game winner, and Janine closed the door. I got to play the first half of the game, um, and it was just like the coolest all around day, like ever. So it was such a great experience. Love that. How about mm-hmm. the last one? What's one thing that nobody knows about you? Ah, uh, not that, you know, nobody knows about me, but, you know, I, I always try and do a little shout out uh, to my cooking show that I actually have on Instagram. So not everybody knows, but yeah, I started a cooking show. It's about going on one year now at the end of January. Uh, It's called the Husky Women Show. So um, I have some of my teammates on uh, every couple of weeks and we like to cook something and um, sometimes it's good. Sometimes not so good. We tried some (laughs) chickpea. It was one of the first episodes. We tried making chickpea cookie dough. I I was doing it with last year, uh, senior Jana Haig and it was not very good. And I think by the end of the night, she like projectile threw it all up because it was so bad, but there's some really good stuff on it too. Like we made some fajitas at my house once that were really good. You know, most of it is pretty good, but chickpea cookie dough, definitely not the best option. (laughs) I just can't even say those two words together. Chickpea cookie dough. Like I wouldn't have ever even thought Uh, of it or tried it. (laughs) No, it wasn't. It wasn't the best. I wouldn't, wouldn't recommend maybe like a two out of 10. <laughs> so earlier when you said cooking, I'm glad you ended with that because what I was going to tell you was it's been so fun for me during doing these shows because we've, I'm finding out all these interesting things about people, right? Like we've got mm-hmm. musical talents and we've got Rubik's cube talents. We've got cooking talents. And so I'm, I'm behind the scenes scheming to figure out how to have a like WCHA talent show where we can show I'll, everybody. I'll do a cook off any day. Cook <laughs> I off love any it. Day. I got Gone it. Thrown. We just got to <laughs> find an opponent. There it is. <laughs> Awesome. This was so great. Emma Paluzny, goaltender, St. Cloud State. The Huskies are back in action uh, Friday and Saturday in St. Cloud against the Midgey State. Games can be found on Flow Hockey. Emma, I loved this. It's so great. I appreciate you joining me today and uh, good luck this weekend and along down the stretch and uh, we'll definitely be watching. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.